This is South Tangerang City, population 1.4 million as of 2023. That's about as big as Munich. Tangsel as it's called also has 400,000 more people than Sendai and 800,000 more people than Brampton, Canada. Public transport, one commuter rail line going through it that runs every 10 to 20 minutes, connecting it with Jakarta and the rest of Banten province. Alright, not great, but it can be decent if there's a great bus net. This is BSD Link. It's free, but it only serves BSD, connecting East BSD with West BSD, which is in Tangerang Regency. It runs around once every 30, okay, not bad, to 120 minutes. Never mind. At least there's live bus tracking via the What Smile app. This is in Trans Bintaro. It connects a bunch of housing clusters in Bintaro Jaya and Graha Raya with the CBD Mall and Train Station. Frequencies are a bit better with 10 to 60 minute frequencies, at least in the core section. There are still a couple of 2 hour gaps in the Pink and Graha Raya line. The Graha Raya line also frequently doesn't run for some reason. I frequently saw the bus just idle in the Bluebird Pool near Pondok Indah. At least it's free. The buses are trackable via the 360 Living app and they are a bit more proper in a way than BSD Link buses. I'm sorry but BSD Link buses, apart from the electric ones, look like charter buses with subway star seating. In trans buses at least look like city buses. This is Sutra Loop. Oh wait, it's dead. The pandemic ended it and now it's reduced to lunchtime service only. Yes, this bus only runs for 90 minutes every day. I have things to say about that later. Trans Jakarta fortunately does run a couple of services here. The S11 to Jelambar, the S21 to JSW, and the S22 to Kampung Rambutan all run all day every day. Though they did cut the S11 from Terminal BSD to some random dead supermarket that's far from anyone's homes. Transjakarta also runs a couple of Royal Trans services that only run at weekdays. Morning to Jakarta and evening back to Tangsel kind of service. They are the S12 and S31, both going to Fatmawati MRT station from BSD Terminal and Bintaro Exchange Mall. Another Royal Trans like service is Gladbus which has two lines going from Cendana Residence Pamulang and Graha Raya to Fatmawati MRT Station. It also only runs on weekday rush hours only, though they do provide the option to go the other way around. You can go from Jakarta to Tangsel in the morning for example. And finally, Trans Anggrek. Oh wait, it's dead. So for local transit, if you live in public Tangsel, you get Angkots and maybe Trans Jakarta in some places. If you live in private Tangsel, you get the really infrequent shuttle buses and some people don't get anything at all. Now to BSD Terminal. Currently it serves Angkots, the S12, and this new service with one departure at 4pm to Merak. And that's it. Speaking of terminals, Pondok Cabe also has a terminal though unfortunately the S41 still isn't running. To further visualize how bad things are, there is no direct bus from Alam Sutra to BSD. First you need to get out of Alam Sutra to then take the Angkot or Trans Jakarta to BSD. The problem is you can't even get out of Alam Sutra because there is no transit. Same thing if you want to go from Alam Sutra to Bintaro. You can't get out of Alam Sutra by transit, and once you do, the in-trans buses to BXC runs every 1-2 to two hours. People from the OG Tangerang City who want to go to Tangsel must either endure a 40-60 to 60 minute Angkot ride, which is not only uncomfortable but also expensive, or they can ride a commuter line to Jakarta and back. If you want to go from East Bay State to Tiputat, you can either drive for 20 minutes or endure a 1 hour Angkot ride because buses for some reason are allergic to highways, probably because the tolls are rather expensive. Let me remind you this, this city has 1.4 million people. It has one rapid transit line, three semi-frequent bus lines, and the rest is survived buses that run every 1-2 to two hours or rusty Angkots. And before someone goes and says why not just use a motorcycle, the ability to afford and operate a motor vehicle should not limit one's freedom to move. Many people really shouldn't be driving or riding motorcycles anyway, for the sake of everyone's safety. You know which demographic I'm talking about. Munich has a gigantic rail system. A U-Bahn, aka Metro, with 8 lines and over 500 vehicles. Sendai has 2 Metro lines and Brampton has plenty buses running every 10 to 15 minutes in multiple corridors. Tangerang, Bogor, Bekasi, and Depok also have frequent and trackable bus service now, leaving South Tangerang as the only city in Greater Jakarta without one. So, how do we fix this? BSD Link and Intrans Bintaro need to increase frequencies. Get rid of the 2 hour gaps and ideally get frequencies under 30 minutes. They should also extend lines beyond their respective areas. BSD Link should have buses going to Gading Serpong and Alam Sutra. It doesn't have to be frequent and you don't have to go too deep in the neighboring city's territory. 30 to 60 minute headways is fine for now. And you can even charge money. Intrans should also run such a service to Alam Sutra and Lebak Bulus. Also, I have 5 apps in my phone for live bus tracking. 
It'd be great if one smile and 360 living tracking feature was also visible in either Mitra Darat or Google Maps. Speaking of which, why is Intrans Bintaro not visible in Google Maps? Alam Sutra needs to bring back the pre-pandemic Sutra loop. I'm sorry, but whose idea is it to run buses at lunchtime only? 90 minutes a day. Do you know how absolutely full Living Roads parking lot can get on a Saturday afternoon? It'd be nice if there was an alternative to either expensive taxis, dangerous motorcycles, or dragging two tons of metal and plastic everywhere. But instead of catering to those people, or people trying to get to the S11 or Royal Platinum shuttle bus on a Monday morning, you somehow decided that running buses at lunchtime to be more important. Public transport isn't just welfare for those who can't drive or afford taxis. And it is definitely not a gimmick, a nice thing to have that you can cut once there's no more media attention or when things get financially hard. Public transport is core infrastructure and should be treated like water, electricity, internet, and road access. Tangsel also needs to get hundreds of buses. I could spend the next 15 minutes listing each line I think should exist, but I limit myself to what I will do with 20 buses. First, I allocate 10 buses to run along the Alam Sutra Bintaro line. The line will start in Flavor Place Alam Sutra, passing by Graha Raya, entering Bintaro Jaya Boulevard all the way to the lobby of Bintaro Exchange Mall. It runs every 10 to 15 minutes. I'll allocate the remaining 10 to the BSD Plaza Lebak Bulls via Chiputat line. That line goes via the second outer ring road and runs every 10 to 15 minutes. At some point in the future, the Rawabuntu Pondok Cabe line, aka the circle line that does not look anything like a circle when it was run by Trans Anggrek, should be reactivated with better buses and live tracking. Angkot lines must also be rearranged so they act as feeders to these bus lines and vehicles renewed because some mini buses are in appalling condition. In fact, some excessively long Angkot lines like the R03A, B04, and B07 should probably be completely replaced by Metro Trans style buses that run every 10 to 20 minutes. These lines are over 30 kilometers long. If you're riding the bus for 10, 20, 30 kilometers, you want AC and headroom. Another Angkot line worth converting is the T16 that connects Alam Sutra, Graha Raya, and Tiladuk, which has Corridor 13. The S41, which is actually a Trans Jakarta line, should also be reactivated. Drivers of the current Angkot line should be reallocated to feeder lines or retrained as bus drivers. Basically what Jakarta did when they replaced the Metro Mini and Angkots with Mini Trans and Micro Trans buses. Now let's talk about trains. I propose an elevated metro line that runs on 1,500 volt DC overhead wire on 1,067mm narrow gauge track and has 6 car trains. Why the oddly specific technical characteristics? Because the northern half starts in Sukarno Hatta station and is going to use Sukarno Hatta line tracks. The line then passes by Tanatinggi station, Ang City Mall, following Serpong Raya and ending in Rao Abuntu station. There could be an optional extension to Pamulang, but honestly, I'm not sure how that's going to work due to Pamulang's tiny roads. Trains should run every 10 minutes, and the depot would most likely be located near the airport. The Alam Sutra Bintaro bus line could become an MRT line too sometime in the future. Now, of course, there is the issue that there is a clock tower in the way. The cheap option would be to build besides the clock tower, but that would be ugly and that would block Alam Sutra's pride and joy. The elegant but also expensive option is to tunnel under the thing. MRT Jakarta's north-south line could also be extended to Tiputat or Pamulang, ideally both, and all the way to BSD and Parong, though those areas' narrow roads might be a problem. There's also a proposed plan to run the MRT from Lebak Pulus to Bintaro and BSD. Personally, I disagree with that one because it runs parallel, way too close to the green line, and makes for an unnecessarily convoluted alignment. With this many turns, I doubt it's going to be faster than driving on the highway. The people of Tipota and Pamulang needed more. South Tangerang is the last city in Greater Jakarta without a frequent bus network. It relies way too heavily on the central government and the private sector for its transportation needs and overall acts more like a regency than a city.